O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it for the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel on the tenth of this every month, one of your families must produce for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel, Present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it into the two doorposts and in the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat, eat it roasted flesh with unlimited bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For in this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your, all your generations shall celebrate, with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perceptual institution. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I, sh what I also handed unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, that it is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You, as often you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
on this great night, we commemorate the Last Supper. Before Jesus offered his life on the cross for us, he left us two great gifts. The first gift, which we talk often about, is the Eucharist. As if offering his body and spilling his blood on the cross were not enough, Jesus continues to offer himself to us at every Mass through the gifts of bread and wine, which are transformed in this blessed sacrament. The one sacrifice Jesus made on Calvary becomes present once again to us every time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist. That is why St. Paul writes in today's second reading, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Indeed, when we receive communion, we are welcoming Jesus himself into our bodies and souls, not in a figurative or symbolic way, but in a real way. It has been the persistent faith of Christians from the apostles on down that the bread truly becomes the body of Christ and the wine truly becomes his blood. What an awesome mystery this is. Jesus also gave a second gift to us at the Last Supper. In fact, had he not given us his second gift, the first gift of Holy Communion would not be possible. The second great gift is the priesthood. When Jesus tells the apostles, do this in memory of me, he gives them the power to change bread and wine into his body and blood. Later on, the apostles pass this authority and power to other men through the laying on of hands. Thus, the priesthood continues to exist to this day so that the Eucharist can continue to be celebrated by God's holy people. Throughout the ages, God has commissioned priests to offer sacrifice to him on behalf of the people. The priests of the Old Testament sacrificed lambs, wolves, and other animals in the temple for various occasions, typically for the forgiveness of sin. Tonight, First reading describes the Passover sacrifice when a lamb was slaughtered and he its blood smeared on the doorpost. The New Testament calls Jesus our high priest because he offered the one sacrifice for sin. His death on the cross. In our day, priests offer the sacrifice of the Mass, which makes that one sacrifice of Jesus present to us today. Sacrifice is at the heart of what it means to be a priest. Priests are not simply functionaries who perform ceremonies for us. Rather, like Jesus, they are called to offer up their very selves for the sake of God's people. That is why the Church asks 
priests not to marry, to live simple lives and to obey their bishops so that they can be more available to God and more available to us. For that reason, they are not simply employees of the church, but members of God's family who show us how to live as God's children. That is why we call them Father. In return for their generosity, we should respect and love our priests as fathers. All this talk of sacrifice might make priesthood sound daunting and too difficult for anyone to live. But we must remember one of the great truths of the spiritual life. God never asks us to give something up without giving us something else even better in return. Therefore, whatever sacrifices a priest must make to serve God's people are small compared to the blessings they receive in return. And by far the greatest blessing is the opportunity to celebrate the Eucharist for God's people. To the young men, not only young, but in general to young men, to these young people who are praying with us through the online stream, I would urge you to consider being priests. If God has called you to serve Him in this way, be assured that He will give you all that you need to say yes to this mighty calling. Also rest assured that you will find great satisfaction and fulfillment in dedicating your life to God and to His people. Great things happen when we say yes to God, in particular when a young man says yes to the priesthood, he begins an adventure which certainly requires courage and sacrifice, but also leads to excitement and joy. Just my dear brothers, potential priests, just Look at me. Do I look joyful? In general, yes. So do not hesitate. Pray to God. If you have any question, give us a call. Set the appointment with Monsignor. Remember, God always gives us grace and strength to follow his ways. Of course, we do not often talk about the priesthood during homilies, because despite their central importance, they make up such a small percentage of the Catholic population. By far, God calls most people to other vocations such as marriage or other forms of religious life. However, through baptism, all of us share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. This is called the common priesthood of the baptized or the priesthood of the faithful. Through baptism, we are empowered to offer prayers, to dedicate ourselves to God, and to live holy lives. It is not only priests who must give themselves in God's service, but all the Baptists. 
one of the beautiful ways we exercise our common priesthood as believers is when we offer up our suffering for others in union with Jesus suffering on the cross. Whenever we do that, our suffering is transformed into a powerful means of bringing God's grace into our lives and the lives of others. Just as the priest offers bread and wine on the altar, so we by our common priesthood can offer ourselves and all that we experience up to God believing that he will use it all for his glory and the salvation of others. On this night, we celebrate the two great gifts of the Eucharist and the priesthood. Since the Last Supper, these two gifts have built up the church that Jesus established through the working of the Holy Spirit. All of us share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ through our baptism. Therefore, none of us is merely a spectator at Mass. Rather, we are all called to participate by offering ourselves to God together with the bread and wine offered on the altar. In doing so, all our joys and sufferings, all our successes and failures, all our good works and sins are united to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and transformed. When we make the Mass the center of our spiritual life, we begin to see our whole life as a communion with the death and resurrection of our Lord. Then the Mass becomes more than an obligation that we fulfill or a ceremony we attend, but a reality that we live. On this most blessed night, we recall the great grace of the Last Supper as we pray together. For the Church, that in the gesture of the washing of the feet, the Church will dedicate herself to the life of service and sacrificial self-giving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That on this night in which the Lord established the priesthood, all priests will recommit themselves to holiness with renewed zeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the power of the Holy Spirit will penetrate the hearts of all people so that Christ will become the source and summit of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have been affected by the spread of coronavirus, for those who are sick from it, and for those who die and for all who are working to contain the outbreak, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the event of Christ's passion will generate lasting peace in the world, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Loving Father, as your Son sacrificed himself for us, may we who seek your favor likewise give our service and our lives for you and for each other. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. I do not accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right. right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, the Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat this flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink this blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered in your presence today, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day in which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, Thomas, uh, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sictus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over, um, was handed, handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those that you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised through heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most body, most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not waning our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, you fill them with light, you bless them and bestow them on us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and protect all of you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.